Greetings everyone, this is Tanya at Isle of Iodine. This video is going to be on wood sorrels. We're going to be talking about the mountain wood sorrel, which is on the left hand side. We're going to talk about the violet wood sorrel on the center part of this page. And then we're going to talk about some yellow wood sorrels as well, which is on the right hand side. But before we get started, disclaimer, I'm not responsible for any injuries or illnesses that result from your actions. You are responsible to do your own research and most importantly, use your common sense. This information is brought to you solely as an educational guide with the best of intentions. It is imperative to always properly identify a plant before you even touch it, let alone consume it. Be smart out there. And use this information along with quality field guides, other reliable sources, and or a knowledgeable forager to assist you. So first we're going to talk about mountain woods throughout. This one and the next one, which is the violet, are much less common than the yellow woods rails. You're going to find these only in like very, you know, in parks, basically in the woods, things that hadn't been disturbed. You're going to find woods rail, the yellow woods rails rather, growing in, you know, lines, disturbed areas. They're definitely much um, more common. Keeping that in mind, we might not want to full reach for these ones. And in fact, most times that I've always found these, these have been in places where you're not legally allowed to forage. So please keep those things in mind. The Mountain Woods Rail, the pictures that I have, I found these in the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. So you take pictures and that's all you take. Remember, be good, um, be good steward of the land. So we're gonna find this in cool, moist woods, size three to five inches, rather low growing. The difference between this, now all of them are gonna have five petals. All of them are gonna have those three little leaflets that are harp shaped with the central crease. Always going to have those. They're all pretty low growing. Little bit of um, variation in the sizes, but you know, rather low growing. You're not going to find it, you know, more than basically a foot tall with some of the yellow woods rails. And the mountain woods rails are going to be, you know, a half inch uh, or half a foot tall, rather, not a half inch. Uh, that would be incredibly small. <laughs> anyway, the mountain woods rail is flowers with five white or pale pink petals with prominent deep pink veins and those five yellow dots in the center. They commonly call this common mountain sorrel, white wood sorrel, wood shamrock. They call it sours, sour grass, very common names for the oxalis genus. This one is specifically called oxalis montana. And this is in the wood sorrel family. Even though they call this wood shamrock, it is not a clover. It is not in the clover flame family. Those are actually in the bean or legum family. This is in the, uh, the Latin name for this family would be Oxaladaceae. I think that's how that would be pronounced. And flowering May through August, typically summer. These are native plants, not as common. Also a note with respect to foraging, this one is not as tasty as the yellow wood sorrels, which are much more tender. You can even look at these leaves and just see they're much tougher looking then you're gonna find with some of the species of the yellow woods rail. So please leave these in the woods, take great pictures and leave them for others to view. The native range for this is the Eastern United States. I wanna keep um, uh, a note on this with the, these maps. These are provided by the USDA and ESRI. You can definitely check them out and go on the USDA plants database and look it out. If you zoom in on some of these, it will give you county data, which means that in the Georgia map, for example, you're not gonna find it all over Georgia. It might you're going to find, I can guarantee, it's only going to be in the mountains, okay? This is, you know, you're not going to find this in Savannah. So this is going to be very restricted. So if there's any report of this plant being in that state, it's going to color the whole state. doesn't mean that you're going to find it throughout the whole state, which is why South Carolina is not represented because they don't really have that mountain range. So, you know, think about the Appalachian Trail going up through Georgia. It's going to be along that and then kind of span out a little bit as it goes north. It does like those cool, moist woods not you know totally heat loving and of course with Canada you know it's not all the way to the north up there it's just going to be up at the bottom part of those provinces but again it's going to call it the whole province if you want to see more details you can definitely check out the USDA website this is the violet woods rail I found these and for the first time in West Virginia near the New River National Park beautiful area if you're into whitewater rafting hiking, sightseeing, doing a lot of cool things. Southern West Virginia has a lot to offer. Highly recommend it. And this one was found at Hawks Nest State Park. Absolutely beautiful state park overlooking the New River with a lot of cool amenities there. Now these flowers are going to be five flaring rose purple or purplish violet petals. Absolutely very showy, dramatic, very interesting to see. You saw this nice coloration here of these purple lines on the leaflets, just like really pronounced, really uh, dramatic. 
This one's a little bit bigger than we're gonna find with the mountain woods row. Definitely the flowers are gonna pop up a little bit more. It's about four to eight inches. Open woods, banks, prairies. This one, I'm so excited to find it. It was the first time I ever found one uh, that was not yellow and it took me off guard because I, my mind had to wrap myself around what I was seeing. Another key thing about this Violet Woods Rail, of course, it's an Oxalis genus, same family. Purple Woods Rail, you might hear it called Violet Woods Rail, depending on how you uh, hyphenate it. I'm kind of a fan of hyphens myself. If you look at these beautiful purple petals, see that little thing hiding over here, right? On the back of this petal. And then if you turn it around, you'll see the spider hanging out. So be careful out there. There's ticks, there's spiders, snakes. You know, you're out looking in the woods. Be mindful of those. Be mindful of poison ivy and other things that could, you know, cause you issues when you're out there. Just be safe. Just want to point that out. This one's going to flower April through July. I would have taken a picture of this one June of two years ago is when I found it. So good idea on when you might find it. These are just some close-ups of the leaves of the Violet Woods Rail. Sometimes you're going to see it with a marking. Sometimes you're not. Depends on the exact species. And I also wanted to make a point here. They talked how the wood shamrock, they call the, the Oxalis species. Look at the difference here with these clover leaves, how they're rounded. They're not heart-shaped, okay? So let's go back to the wood sorrels and look at the difference in the leaves. Oftentimes clip art, you'll see that for samrocks, which are clovers, they will use these leaves. They're not the same plant, but it's just a common mistake. Just wanted to point that out so you're aware of it. This is the distribution map for this. This appears to be more widespread, but don't take that as necessary. Again, if they found one you know plant over in Arizona that's going to color the whole state doesn't mean that it's more common it just means it's more widely distributed okay next up the yellow woods rails there's quite a few different varieties around and this is a common plant that you might find depending on where you are again I'm focusing on the ones in the eastern United States you might find different ones where you're living and you might find some of the same as well these are my favorite these are quite uh, not necessarily the creeping ones I don't really like it the darker here as we see the variation in this species is a little bit darker. It's a little tougher to eat in my opinion. I like the lighter green ones, especially the really tender ones or a little trail side nibble to snack on. Now I never obviously filled out the flowers portion on what time it does, but it's summertime similar to the other ones. So we'll just let that one go. And they call this procumbent yellow sorrel means it's spreading. They also call the, the wood sorrels, especially the yellow ones, sleeping beauty because they do at night the flowers fold up and they take a little nap for the night. Also, if it gets cold, those those creases and those leaflets, they will fold down. So you might see that. Hopefully, I'll get out and get the video before it happens. It's getting a little late in the evening. And it is uh, summertime. Summer just officially started just a few days ago. Just to kind of keep things in context. All right. So what we have here is just some more pictures. This is going to give the distribution map for the creeping woods row. And also the distribution maps for the yellow woods rails and the common yellow woods rail. So the slender yellow woods rail, very delicious, tasty plant as well. They also call the southern woods rails. So you might find that one. See some of this one is fairly interesting because some of the leaves, the leaflets, they look like they've been painted, trimmed on the outside with some purple, these red colorations, very pretty. Of course, it's not, you know, you're going to see some hairs on some of the leaves, some of the stems. It doesn't make it unpalatable. Just be mindful, some species have more hairs than others. And also hairs kind of depends on how cold it is too. There's a lot of things to that. So this is the Oxalis stricta. This is the common yellow low wood sorrel. They call it common yellow Oxalis. Again, you'll hear lots of different names. May through October, you'll see this plant flowering. And this is what's interesting about this one is the erect seed pods and their bent stalks form a sharp angle. It's a low growing, delicate, five petaled, you know, flowers, as you can see. The leaves are going to be clover like. We've already looked at the differences with three inversely heart shaped leaflets and the leaves often fold along a central crease. So you'll see that uh, commonly. You'll see the picture on the right hand side where they're folding down, maybe to escape the heat. Who knows what they're doing? I don't know. They don't talk to me. And we see the picture on the left hand side next to the violets. We have that little six inch ruler to get an idea about how big that one is. Now, how do we eat it? The leaves and the flowers are what we eat and they're quite palatable raw. They have that sour taste. They taste like lemony, it's very cool flavor. You don't want to eat a lot of them. We'll talk about why in a minute, but if you want it, you can make a lemonade style cold drink 
and you can steep some leaves and hot and stems and for 10 to 15 minutes with hot don't use boiling water just hot you want to just make an infusion gentle as she goes and cover that up usually when you steep things you do want to cover them and why they're steeping so all the good stuff doesn't evaporate away and then you want to sweeten the taste and then chill medicinally again you can use that lemonade style cold drink because that is an infusion and you could just sip it when it was warm if you would like if you want to treat some fever stomach cramps nausea might help with that at least that's what they say now you can make a poultice of the leaves and that's going to help with treating swelling a lot of plants are good for that some plants that aren't would be poison ivy so make sure you learn your plants and this plant is high in vitamin c that's again why we don't use that boiling water we want to preserve that vitamin c which is not heat tolerant now we want to be mindful of the oxalic acid content of this one it's so you can lower amounts but if you and then large quantities on a regular basis can inhibit calcium absorption by the body and hence may interfere with kidney function due to its high oxalic acid content it i want to note though a lot of plants have oxalic acid in it like spinach so you can minimize it by steaming those greens but in chard if you like that it's one of my favorite plants like swiss chard uh, beet greens as well so we eat those very commonly so you might um, just keep those things in mind if you're eating a lot of those you might not want to eat a lot of woods rails or you know maybe talk to your doctor or your health care provider about that if you're into that and uh, this plant the yellow woods rails are often going to be bigger than what we find with our violet woods rails and our mountain woods rails these can be six to 15 inches and um, they are perennials now we're going to go outside and we're going to check out some of these in my yard i hope that they are flowering and i'm going to pick some and i'm going to take them over and my neighbor has some chickens and these chickens absolutely love this plant so anyway here we go we'll go outside thanks all right i'm out here in my backyard i know you can definitely pick up my neighbor's air conditioner and i do apologize here we have the yellow trail this one's already going to seed i'm going to see if we can maybe capture any of these explosions are just not ripe enough it's been a little dry so we might not but you can get a idea oh that one kind of wanted to explode and there's some over here as well yeah it just having a little rain so not doing so good oh that one see some of those pop out if it is um more ripe they'll pop a little bit more but we see how little that seed is on those anyway i hope you're able to catch that I'm gonna go see if I can find any more around. This just shows this is a rather low growing one, but I had mowed my lawn so it didn't have a lot of opportunity to grow. And I did feed some of the other ones to my neighbor's chickens. Now there are some that you can actually see the flowers closing up there. Okay, down here you have a bigger cluster, but again, these are going to seed, so it is what it is. But you saw what the flowers look like very small little plant and you can see that they're all creased up you know a little late in the evening we can pull these things down you can see the little heart shaped leaves how small those are very tender very tasty very exciting all right hope this helped with your identification of what's else all right peace and love everybody if you haven't please like and subscribe